Hello again, podcast world, and welcome into season three of the Adam Jones Podcast presented by the Baltimore Banner. I'm Jerry Coleman. He's the former five-time MLB All-Star Adam Jones as we broadcast from the Sunshine State here in Sarasota, Florida. Year 15 for the Orioles in Sarasota. Time has yeah. flown. Now today in episode... Long. Yeah, today in episode... This was a dump when we got here too, by the way. <laughs> they, they made some <laughs> fast improvements. Well done. Oof. Today in episode 61, as Adam corrected me before we got started, I thought we were on 60, but time does fly, like I said. We're going to be joined by Orioles outfielder Cedric Mullins. We'll also, Adam and I, talk about his week as a guest instructor down here at spring training and his trip around the Grapefruit League. Watch out, Florida drivers. Plus, we deliver another <laughs> edition of Socially Speaking and communicate with the podcast, as always, at Adam Jones Pod on social media. But as always, we begin with our leadoff guest, our featured guest, sponsored by Jimmy's Famous Seafood. He is Cedric Mullins. And Cedric, I'm going to congratulate you here at the top. You're probably wondering, why am I being congratulated on this podcast? Well, you have officially become the first two-time Oriole member of the Adam Jones podcast. We had you on just over a year ago at the beginning of spring training. And here you are again. You're not our first Oriole this year. Corbin Burns beat you to it, but it's great to have you back on. And we all remember when you were coming up, Adam Jones was your mentor. At least he claimed that on this podcast. So we'll take him at his word. I want to know who you have taken under your wing now that Cedric Mullins is really in veteran status now. The sheriff. Yeah, finally, finally hitting that vet status. Uh, I feel like I've taken on the group. You know, we got a bunch of young guys coming up literally all around the same time, all trying to learn the big league level. So you got, you know, you got Kowser, Stowers, uh, Kerstad, a lot of cute K words in there. But, uh, you know, they're, they're doing their thing. So it's a matter of uh, teaching them what I can. I'm still learning as well. You know, it's a game of learning. So it's just uh, giving them what I got. How is it being the old guy now? And you ain't even 30. We talked about that. You, old, you, you, you guys are old guy. You, Hayes, y'all old. Y'all ain't even 30. Yeah, we're old and we're not even 30. So that's a good sign for us, actually, to be – to be considered vets, you know, that means that we've come a long way, you know, as a career. But, you know, to not even have that 3-0 behind our names yet, I think it's a big deal. And we're talking about that. You came a long way. Oof. Long way, boss. Long way. And I want to talk about that. How has this organization just changed in the last six years? Because, again, rebuild, you were part of, you were part of the rebuild. You, Hayes, and then you get the Rushman, and – how has it just been different in the last six years? Yeah, just uh, it, it was kind of it felt like we were kind of learning on our own. You know, we were kind of put in a position where it was do or die. You know, it felt like every single day we were going out there trying to succeed, having struggles, having things come up that just weren't going our way. But, you know, continue to grind through it. You know, I think uh, that wave of, you know, me, Hayes, Santander, Mountcastle, you know, even McKenna, you know, doing his thing out there. We all just kind of. uh kind of stuck together as a group and we're able to make each other better day by day. Like you said, got Adley coming up as well. So now bullseye on the back. You won the East. When we win the East, that makes the Yankees spend money. That makes the Yankees <laughs> mad. That makes Boston mad. You see, I mean, there's an injury with Giolito. Somebody's going to go there, big money. Um, how is it going to feel when, you know, the Orioles in town, people's like, oh, the Orioles in town, let's beat them up. Now nah, the Orioles in town, we're going to smack y'all. We have a bull's, bullseye on y'all back now. How does that how does that make y'all feel doing the clubhouse and the hunger? Oh, uh, we're we're very comfortable at where we're at. Uh, you know, I know the type of town that we have, and other teams know it too. You know, we didn't take anyone by surprise by I say halfway through the season last year. So even with that target on our backs, they still got to come out with their best because we're going to do the same. Well, the buzz, the media attention. Just to piggyback off what Adam was saying, I'm sure you guys appreciate it, but. As Adam also indicated, there's no more sneaking up on anyone anymore. Yeah, I think that's the beauty of kind of how we progressed as an organization. You know, they uh, everyone kind of got to see the progression. And, you know, uh, last year was kind of like the smack in the face. You know, it's uh, uh, our time to basically see, show what we can do and to have the year that we had. You know, uh, I know the guys are hungry to follow that up with even more shooting for a World Series wing. That's the that's the goal. That's the mission. Have things accelerated a little quicker than you anticipated? Uh, I think they've paced out kind of the way I expected it to. You know, once uh, once that new wave came up, you know, with Adley Gunner, 
uh, you know, the Kirst Ash Stowers, all those guys. Um, it was just a matter of seeing what they could do at the big league level. And they came out and they, they showed what they can do for sure. Um, and along with, you know, the first wave of guys, me, Hayes, Tony, continuing to be consistent, continuing to, you know, put our best foot forward out there, leading the pack in that sense. Uh, I think we're right where we want to be. So how's it been with that? Every move made in the last three, four years has benefited the organization. I'm in the cage watching these guys, on the field watching these guys. Like the talent pool is deep and it's not it's not stopping. Like the guys are coming through the whole entire pipeline. And how exciting is that? I remember when I got uh when I got to the organization, we didn't have as many prospects as they have now. And I remember I was like, man, I'm gonna make everybody move out of out of my position. Then you come along. I'm like, oh <laughs> man, I've heard I heard about him. So how is it <laughs> these young guys make you maintain that hunger how has that been it was like look at that hey these guys ain't they can't they ain't, no, ain't no foray it is it's it's they're tired of triple a how is that keeping you hungry yeah you know uh having my own personal goals is one thing that keeps my drive going but you know to see these guys come up and knowing that they're going to be at this level that hunger comes from me wanting to be a part of that as well you know so i'm going day by day it is a process it is one day at a time but you know, the, the end goal, the end thought process of what we want, everyone kind of has that cumulative thought, and uh, it's ready to go. Well, there's a lot of depth in the outfield. There's a lot of depth in the infield as well. There's depth all over the place, to be honest. What have you seen from the first-round pick from last year, Enrique Bradfield Jr., Cedric? Yeah, I haven't been able to see too much just yet. Um, you know, he's been playing some of the away games, but I've seen him in action a little bit. Obviously, he's got the speed got the defense you know spring training is kind of weird with the bat you know some guys who are known hitters just might not be getting hits right now this is kind of is what it is but uh you know seeing his process as well you know taking things slow one day at a time but getting geared up for a full season more to come with orioles outfielder cedric mullins exclusively here on the adam jones podcast but first let's take a break and salute our dedicated sponsors. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Weinman Company. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. See the whole crew with something for everyone from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience nonstop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood, Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. Maryland Lottery. Because fun looks good on you. Right now, play our exciting new multiplier scratch offs for a chance to win up to $2 million. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. By Effective Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction, like leak investigation, framing, trim carpentry, insulation, drywall, painting, wallpaper, flooring, masonry, waterproofing, paving, tree removal, and much more. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. 
Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that, do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks. 2022 Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. Everyone knows Green Mount Station in Hampstead, but did you know that at Green Mount Station, you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks. And with Green Mount Station's brand new Bet Park Sports Book, you can bet on all other sports as well, wherever you are in Maryland. Spreads, money lines, live bets, props, parlays, and teasers. The Bet Park's Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Green Mount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money, and with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast, Royal Farms. Let's dive right back into our exclusive conversation with Orioles outfielder Cedric Mullins, only on the Adam Jones Podcast. Who's a guy that we don't know about yet that you see that could be the next, you know, move himself into a prospect list? You know, obviously, you got, they got the top 10. They focus on that. But a guy that's on that outside that is like, hey, he's, he's a little better than you think. Who's who's a surprise guy? Um. Uh, that's the harder one to pick out. You know, it's uh, there's a bunch of dudes down the pipeline that are doing the thing. But uh, let me see. There is a dude that we just picked up. He was with Cleveland for a little bit. Uh, Daniel Johnson goes by Jet. He's been showing out this spring. You know, I never really got a chance to see him play often. But, uh, you know, I remember uh, – First at bat in double A, this man robbed me of a home run, and that was like the last <laughs> time I got to see him. And uh, but yeah, he's been doing his thing. I think he's kind of uh, under the radar right now, but uh, we'll see what he got got up his sleeve. As far as the locker room goes, I'm asking all the uh, the guys during spring training as you walk into the locker room because your hours are so long during spring training. People don't understand that. Is there someone that sticks out as the loudest person in that clubhouse when you walk in there early in the morning and it's like, I'm still waking up right now, but I can hear that guy when I'm in a, maybe in a dream, unfortunately. Oh, man. Uh, you know, I'm going to mess with him a little bit, but Colton Kowser, that man can talk, Ooh. but he's full of energy. It's all positive, nothing negative. That's what you need in the clubhouse as well. You need that guy that can bring that energy every single day. McKenna's also that, been that way for years. You know, coming to the clubhouse, ready to go, ready to put in the work, brings the energy. I think right. I think we got Tyler Wells before from Ooh. Burns, didn't we? I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, he, okay. he, he stays on the pitcher side a little bit, so I don't hear as much. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll sit with him at the lunch table on occasion. He's got a lot to say, too. As a guy that's one year, one year away from free agency, I believe, which is an yeah, honor. Sure. I was asked this question. How do you stay in the big leagues? I was asked this by multiple guys. I never really, I mean, I asked that question a long time ago. And again, I'm asked, I would ask that as probably an 18 year old, 19 year old. So I don't remember the response that. We'll ask you that later in the me. show too, AJ. We'll ask you later in the show. Okay. About that. Yeah. And I got a great answer for that. Okay. All right. But <laughs> what, would you be, what would be your answer to that? How do you stay in the big leagues? You're going to your seventh year, sixth, seventh year? Mm hmm. Like, how do you stay in the big leagues? Because you've seen both sides of it. Yeah, in terms of in terms of performance, it's a matter of consistency. You know, I think that's the biggest key there in order to, you know, get the results that you want day in and day out. With that comes mental toughness. You can't do anything without it. Uh, you know, sticking to uh, your regimen, being disciplined with your workouts, being disciplined with, your cage routine, you know, being able to make adjustments. I think that's that's the biggest part of staying in the big leagues from my experience. 
Last one for me is what did you do in terms of trying to improve your game during the off season? Did you do anything in particular that you thought you needed to work on? Yeah, the first and foremost, staying healthy. Like that's the biggest part of putting together a full season, especially when you're going good and you come across a freak injury. Um, it can it can it can uh, play its role in terms of how you kind of fall off at that point. But uh, you know, another other things, continuing to use the whole field, kind of got away from that. Uh, you know, locking in on some power. You know, I know I have it in me, but it's a matter of continuing to be that guy who's able to spray the field, use his legs to be dominant on the base pass. Uh, all that stuff, using my defense to my advantage, you know, so uh, that's all I've, I've always had that. But in terms of offense, you know, continuing to use the whole field. I want to ask something, and really, do you like leading off, or because because I asked that is obviously you're a tone setter, you get on, you can run, but your numbers with men in scoring position are pretty damn good. <laughs> so it's like, what I mean. Would you want to be in a more of an uh, RBI situation sometimes? But at the same time, your lineup is so strong, it's turning, it turns over. You got the seven, eight, nine is not just the you know rollovers. So, yeah. but do you like leading out? Because I liked it, but it's like I'm missing out on stakes. Yeah, no, I, I definitely do like leading <laughs> off. I've been a leadoff hitter forever. So it's something that I'm just so used to being. And like you said, like being good with runs and scoring position, I think that just comes from having that thought process of making things happen. That's what you know, leadoff hitters do, and not putting pressure on myself. If I was in the four hole, five hole, whatever the case, with guys in scoring position, eh, there's a chance that I might try to do a little too much. But uh, when I have those opportunities that come up when I'm leading off, like you said, line up, line up, turn it over, take advantage. You know, and that's a big thing being at that top spot. All right, it's my last one. We we'll let you go, man. How awesome has it been having Adam Jones in in camp? Oh, I should have asked that, man. That doesn't be my question. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, that, no, nah, it's been awesome, though. You know, uh, I see the guys and how comfortable they are approaching you, asking you questions. Um, you know, they're not afraid to learn. I think that's the biggest part, you know, myself included. I know we're out there, you know, having fun, enjoying our time together because uh, we didn't really have that, you know, as much uh, when you were with, still with the team. So it's just uh, – it's been great. I know everyone loves having Adam Jones around. You know, there's guys asking me questions about when we played together. You know, it's just super fun to talk about. All right, make sure you tell them the truth. Don't sugarcoat it for the <laughs> younger I'll players. You you know. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, Cedric, we can't thank you enough for being the first two-time Oriole here on the Adam Jones podcast. And we look forward down the road to a third appearance. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, sounds great. All right, Adam, let's move on to our For the Birds segment. It's sponsored by the Maryland Lottery. Hey, when you play the Maryland Lottery, set limits and never play when you're stressed and know your odds of winning. To learn more, just visit mdlottery.com slash play responsibly. Must be 18 years or older to play. Now, Adam, you and I have been in Florida for about a week. You've been here actually longer than me. And more than just the Orioles, as we were just talking about with Cedric, but some of your activities have taken you to other spring training facilities. So fill us in, including so, me. So yeah, so I'm on. Uh, came out here on behalf of Bat Baseball Assistance Team. I'm my 13th or 14th year on the board. I should know that exactly. I think 13th year, and uh, you know we're a charity that's raising money for former players and the former baseball business. So we're play, play, people in the baseball business. So I came out here. Got shut down on the freeway on a 275 going north. So I could I had to go all the way around Tampa. Somebody, I guess, just decided to drive the other way. What's We're going in on in Florida? What's going on, Florida? <laughs> um, but no, and then uh, I did my obligations working a week with bad hit up a, a lot of clubhouses, and uh it was great. We raised a record of uh just shy of four point four million is amazing. So um great job for all the guys at bat. I've Loved what I've done so far working with that organization. My wife tells me, stop volunteering, get paid. I'm like, it's a charity. She's like, so, uh, but <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> um, but no, but then the last, obviously since Saturday, I've uh, been in O's camp and man, it's been phenomenal. It's been, it's been great to see the other side of it, to see these guys, the way they play the game, the, the, the mindset of these guys, how hard these guys work. It is just, it's, I mean, all. Of uh, of the talent that they have, so what Elias has done is 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 worked out. He's got a lot a lot of talent out there, and uh, every day organizationally, the the coaches are putting in work, 
and it is great. It's, and, you know, I just told you, I'm there as just a resource. If you need me, hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm around. I got my fungo. I've been, I was in the outfield today, hit my fungo every day, just out there hitting my fungo, just bang. You know what I mean? Trying to just get the ball through, uh, just work on my fungos. I got, you see me, I got my old, just, my, just the normal little coaches gear, but it's been just a blessing though. Cause, because honestly, it's like, I told you, I got no ego in this. I got no skin in the game here. I just want them to win. I want them to succeed. It's great when Baltimore's winning and cool and stuff like that. That's where my legacy is. So it's cool and all that stuff. So um, what they've got is is, is great. And uh, it's, it's just good to be around it. And, you know, sitting on the backfields, these young coaches are asking me questions. I'm like, hey, look, I'm here to be a book. And the best question that I was asked, I was asked this by three people, is how do you stay in the big league? What did you tell them? And that's an element question. How do you stay in the big leagues? Everybody wants to say, I want to get a big leagues. But how do you stay in the big leagues? Ooh. The answer to that is if you have to understand and you have to humble yourself. You were a starter. You were good, good, good the whole entire process of your life. That's how it works. That's why you're in this position. And not just there by chance. At some point, you're going to have to understand that, okay, you might not be a major league starter, but you're a major league player. But there's only so many spots. That's why there's 14 people on the bench. I know 16 people. No, now 17 people with the 26 man roster. Only nine can play. Be a Swiss Army knife for this organization. Doesn't matter. Be a Swiss for it. Like learn how to play. It's spring training too. Go on the backfields and I look at. I hey, I can see that I ain't gonna play this position. So you know, hey, can I go get extra work at this position? Can Versatility. I go- can't play six positions if, if need be. You want to be somebody, and I said this, this is exactly what I said, is be something that the coach doesn't know he needs right now. He don't know he needed, but he might be like, do we got anybody that can do that? And no. <sighs> I might need that. So it's be a Swiss Army knife. Do something that the coach doesn't know he needs yet. Go out there in spring training. These young dudes out there swinging it. They hack it. They letting it eat. Stealing bases, diving. They, hey, dude, you get one at bat. Do you got the starter has his has his three at bats? He gets out the game in the fifth, sixth. You got one at bat. You might get two. You got one. Bang. Don't sit up there and just take no pitch, man. What, dude? I'm gonna work this count. What? <laughs> let it eat. It's spring training. You're out there to put notice on people. The manager is watching. Coaches are watching. And now it's cool because I'm staying there the whole game, which has been weird because I don't stay the whole game. It's been – yeah, I ain't never stayed the whole game right. for a long time. You're on the um, golf course usually by the fifth. I'm out. Um, but, you know, just seeing how engaged everybody is and the coaching staff is watching. Obviously, the, the eyes are always on them. So it's great to to be a part of that and just watch it from afar. Again, I'm just open book to them. If they need me, what's up? Uh and, you know, a lot of people have gravitated towards me, start talking to me. And it's it's really cool because, again, I got no skin in the game. I just want to help where I can. And, again, there's certain things that I don't know yet. I'm trying to learn the new terminologies. I'm trying to know, learn the new uh, new systems. Like, it, all this is – it's not necessarily all foreign, but a lot of it's foreign. Okay. I mean, you've I'm only like, been out of the game a few years here. Right. But I've been out of America for five. So, I'm just like – it's a lot more information. And when I left Baltimore, it was completely different. You know, it's just, just so much just different in a good way. You know, so they've invested in the technology. They've invested in the information and they've invested in the coaching and talent. That's why the assets is good. Well, you mentioned these <laughs> players and you don't have to mention any names whatsoever. But for me, a prime example of what you were talking about was Jorge Mateo. who worked yeah. his tail off in the outfield this year during the off season, knowing that's where he may be playing during mm-hmm. the regular season. I got to ask you how it felt to put the uniform on back again. I believe you even had to pass a physical beforehand. How did I? Oh yeah. Know? I mean, all of it. You know what I mean? The doctor, I said, are you 40? I'm, no, no. 38. Yeah. No, not yet. Not yet. Shooter. Um, but no, it, <clears throat> it's been good. And he's one of the players too, that is obviously uh, a Swiss army knife. And, it's just is what it is when it comes to it. You have Gunnar Henderson, the rookie of the year. He's probably going to play shortstop, um, third base. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't know the starting lineup. I'm not in that room. I don't know the starting lineup. But the chances are playing shortstop is going to be Gunnar Henderson. That's just, I think everybody knows that. <laughs> um, but I told him, I said, dude, 
you are arguably like one of the most exciting players in baseball. You are extremely fast. You go first or third on anybody you run, you get you got a cannon. I was like, dude, you gotta if you want to make the team, the things you gotta do, the beaver play out here, go over here, do whatever you can. Cause all you want because most what everybody wants to do as a major leaguer is hit. Okay. Not everybody defensive replacement. I get it. <clears throat> You're in the major leagues. I get it. Nobody really wants to do that. That's just just, just the God honest truth. Everybody wants to start. I want to hit. I want to get 500 at bats. That's how you do. That's the mentality you should have. The reality of it is not everybody's going to do that. Find your at bats somewhere. Where can you find your at bats? Be again, be a Swiss Army knife and find at bats because now with, with you know, matchups, there's going to be moves made in the game. You know what I mean? And you want to be one of those guys that's made in the moves. Again, I was, I was saying this to a coach and I'm like, <clears throat> you know, just at bats. There used to be a lot more guys getting 500 at bats. You know, now it's a lot of guys getting 400 and a lot of guys getting that two to 250. You know what I mean? Because of the changes, the versatility, the moves made, the days off, uh, a lot, you know, moves made during the game. Some, you know, it just the moves. So I'm like, you want to be part of those moves. And if you do that, that means, again, you look when you look at 250 at bats over a long season, you're like, dang, that's not that much. Because it's you know 600 at bats the full season normally, but you're you're getting that bat every day, almost. You know what I mean? It's not like you're just getting uh, you know you're playing a, a week, you ain't playing for three weeks. It's no, you're getting an at bat or two or three. You probably get ten a week, so you're still staying fresh. And I was like, dude, ultimately you want to hit and get in the lineup, play wherever they ask, play wherever they ask, though. That's a great. Great answer, and uh, yeah. hopefully, hopefully they absorb that part of your uh, advice. Now, as far as your responsibilities go, you mentioned you know hitting some fungos here. I saw you throwing the ball out to the first baseman as he comes to the dugout. Have they asked you to do anything else else in particular? Speak to the guys as a group, maybe uh, run some wind sprints and see if you can still keep up with them. Anything out of the ordinary <laughs> share? Hey, I ain't running no wind sprints with him. I can tell you that right now. But no, <laughs> you know, in the backfields of, you know, just be around. That's ultimately that's what they asked. And, you know, I went into the office first day and it's like, hey, how can I support you? Um, how can I support you? But yeah, I'm here for you guys. I'm not here for me. You know, I'm here for you. So uh, it's not the Adam Jones team. This is the Baltimore Orioles. How can I support you, hidden coach? How can I support you, Sanders, uh, first base coach, outfield coach? How can I support you? Hide or anyway, you know, morale or whatever you whatever. And uh no, it's it's been cool. And you know, again, my message is simple. Hey, you want to play hard, play long in the big leagues, you gotta grind it out. I, oh, again, well, grind it out. Were road trips optional for you? Because you did make the trip to Bradenton this past week to yeah. see on the Pirates. It was optional, but I mean, me, it's it's close. I knew Bradenton, that was the only trip Buck made me go on. It was like, come on, man, you got to go one. I was like, that's fine. That's 12 miles door to door. That's fine. Uh, Clearwater. We had Clearwater this week. No. 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 Mm -hmm. First off, it's far. Yeah. It's hot. And then coming back. I always think of the coming back part. Like, I didn't mind going to Fort Myers. Every once in a while, I'd go down to the Twins or something like that. Every once in a while. Oh. And... Uh, you know, I didn't mind that coming back. That was fine. Sometimes we stop off, go hog hunting for an hour or two, and then, you know, get back on the road, be, uh, let the traffic go, die down a little bit. Um, but it was the uh, – no. Nah, nah. I think what you're Because I'm going to stay the whole game, though. Yeah, like, I think as what a player, trying to say is half of the U.S. population seems to be in Sarasota right now. Or in this whole West. This whole West side, oh, my Lord, it is so much traffic here. But, again, I say that with respect because yeah. it's older people here. And hey, with respect, you deserve to live this life. Take your time. And we're Please, not talking take your about time. You. I don't accidents. Take your time. I ain't trying to hit you. Take your time. Okay. Take it. I respect it. I might scream in the car. Don't let it bother you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't, Just remember, I'm people carry in this state. So I know. Well, no but I'm, I'm screaming in the car. I got AC. No I'm screaming yeah. in the car. So I ain't gonna, I'm not going to roll my window down. I ain't crazy. No. But hey, I did want to ask you. Uh, about the uh, the big bosses were in town, John Angelos and the new guy, David Rubenstein or Rubenstein, depending on your perspective. Did you get a chance to meet with any Absolutely. of those guys? 
Uh, you see them on uh, during their visit. Did they? I don't know if they made it into the clubhouse or where you were. They were around, and the, the they were around, and it was great. It was great to see everybody. You know, to see just the just everybody. Uh, I think the the whole organization has gotten a, uh, a just a boost. I think of morale. I think just anytime you bring in a new uh, to ownership and groups and just you know have them around, you know, you just is an aura. And this is, this is a, a, a guy in Oregon and group who are trying to do something very, very special in Baltimore. And it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. But I ain't going to dig in too deep with that because, you know, hey. I just that think that bad. that game against the Yankees in which he showed up with John Angelos is going to be a day that Oriole fans will remember for years, maybe decades. Of course. Long. Because he, he he worked the fan base, Mr. Rubenstein. He you know he went out into the crowd, shook hands, posed for pictures, and all that. And I think that will make an impression, and we'll look back on that twenty years. I, I mean, I think it's great because again, you have a ton of supporters that uh, have been Orioles Orioles fans for years and decades, and have seen the previous owners. They have seen the Angels ownership, and now you have a new uh, ownership coming in, and you know. A lot of people here in Sarasota, the old, our older fans, they have seen those change. They've seen those regimes, so they appreciate that going around and shaking hands. Because again, they are generally the same age as as Mr. Rubenstein. So, uh, you know, it, it's I think it's just, it was great. The, the, again, the aura around it, and again, it's the Yankees, so you got to show up against the Yankees. Don't show up against the Twins. Don't show up against you know what I mean. Don't show up against uh, you know the Rays. I'll show up with the Yankees. Yeah, you know what I mean. Show up against the Yankees. You know, I know they ain't gonna bring nobody. We know they ain't gonna bring nobody down. That's how. Well, you works. guys, you guys may have had seventy people inside your dugout at one point, which is why I think Eddie Murray was doing the smart thing by sitting near the bullpen. I noticed that. It is so many people, and it's crazy though because, you know, as the player, I walk. You know, I, I navigate myself through the club, through the dugout. Everybody's out of my way. There's no, you know what I mean. Uh, but as, uh. uh Whatever I am, an instructor. Or I don't know what the hell I am. Guest instructor. We'll go with. Yeah, that. it's like walking around. I'm like, where's the spot? There's too many people here. Why? So I was like, I don't know where to sit. But so it's really, really nice though. After the fifth inning, when all the guys leave, it's really nice. I'm like, okay, this is a normal dugout. How it is, you know, in and out the innings and talking. I get to talk to some of the guys, like talk to a lot of the coaches that stay. Because uh, the young guys are in the game now. Now I get to talk to the coaches who were talking to, you know, some of the guys that they're going to have in double A or triple A. So you know, I've had some awesome conversations just being in that dugout, man. And it is it's awesome. These guys ask questions. That's what I respect the most. These guys and these kids, they're asking questions. Most of these, most dudes don't ask questions. You know what, what I mean? about Eddie Murray? Did he ask you any questions? No. <laughs> did, you, did you pick his brain instead? I mean, because you're down Always. there simultaneously. Always. That's the last thing I wanted to touch yeah. on. The fact that you guys are down there together. Yeah, always. And the thing is, is that, you know, they they ask me questions. I'm asking Eddie. So I'm like, Eddie's right here. But it's just, again, it's the, the generational gap is, is big. It's big. You know, I watched Eddie Murray play a little bit towards the tail end of his career. Uh, these kids, most of them weren't even alive when he played his last game. Yeah. So I'm trying to bridge that gap to them because I'm like, look, at this right here, this is the ultimate resource, 500, 3,000, 1,800. This is the ultimate resource right here next to me. Cause you're what you're asking me, I'm gonna be like, mm -hmm, yeah, you go in. Hey man, what's what's uh, what's what you told? <laughs> oh man, look at man, just get ready to get this. Why don't you just ask this man right here? You know what I mean? You got to use these resources. And I, obviously, I'm more relatable. I'm younger. I you know I just fresh out the game. Uh, they've seen me around, so uh, it, I'm more relatable to them. I get that. But I'm like, hey, you guys, you see this man right here? Talk to him. He wants to talk to you talk to him all right so let's head to socially speaking and this week we asked actually you asked on x which is the most difficult sport to play you as a former mlb all-star obviously have a lot to say about baseball iv at willington on the x chimed in with people confused demanding with hard football is very physically demanding but no regular action in any sport is as hard as hitting a baseball and every hitter is expected to do it so the notion of skill position positions, I should say, doesn't really exist. Your reply. Look, man, I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of people about this. Hitting a baseball consistently, I think, is one of the single individually hardest things to do. Jack Nicholas, was it Jack Nicholas and Mickey Mantle? We talked yeah. about that earlier. He said yep. that, you know, 
hitting hitting a putt in front of you know thousands of people, that million people at home, ten foot putt to win the U.S. Open. That's an extremely extremely hard thing to do. And as I golf a lot, I see firsthand. Chip, <laughs> you can see me. Oof, Chip, you know. Oof. Um, playing quarterback individually, I think that's one of the hardest positions. Uh, like I said, hockey goalie. Like it, hockey is an incredibly hard sport. Dude, I would put baseball at highest. Mm. Hitting the baseball hard, man. Hitting the baseball is hard. And you've seen throughout the years, every baseball player goes to other sports and looks normal, especially the major sports and, you know, excluding hockey. But baseball players are, they can throw a football, except the Dominicans, you know, throw the football well. No papi. Uh, they can shoot a basketball and look and not look like, uh, you know, they've never done it before. Um, along came Polly, make it rain. That's what the other, you know, we don't look like that. And we can play golf. We can play tennis. We play racket sports better than the other ones. And you've seen all the first pitches from other athletes. Oh, only quarterbacks have been good. That's it. You know what I mean? And you exactly. That's it. So, but we can play golf. We just I think baseball players are just a little more fluid. But again, football is hard, demanding. Every sport is hard, Every, especially to be to the top. Is extremely, extremely hard. It, I, to me, I obviously play baseball. I think it's the hardest, but I cannot exclude hockey, golf. I mean, tennis. Tennis and golf. Like, you've, I've seen all these documentaries, and, like, these dudes are like, I'm, I see why they have nervous breakdowns. It's just you. Yep. And, and you're not going to win. You know so. yep. And you're, you're not, on your own. You're, you're going to win a lot, but you're going to lose a lot of semifinals. Like, <laughs> that's the more. I didn't want five matches. No. Nah. Then you get the you got number one seed. Sorry. We had one other post that I wanted to mention from Cedric at Uncle underscore Bubba One. And he talked about that pitcher might be right on par with being a quarterback in terms of difficulty, but he also mentioned being a goaltender in ice hockey. Again, I think that is incredibly hard. Being a goalie in soccer, it's boring in soccer. (laughs) Uh, but again, that's why hockey is up there because you gotta skate and you gotta uh Hit the you gotta you know hit the puck. It, it's it's incredible. It's incredible. I it, I don't know what's the hardest. I know that that only pros are good at sports. That's it. You can make say somebody anybody make. that say oh I'm good at golf. I'm a this play a professional. Play four days in a row with people watching. That's why you that's why you ain't that damn good. Like there's a lot of players that play it and they're at the golf club the the winning the championships at the country clubs. In front of nobody, in front of their friends that they played for and with a long time, but playing four days in a row. You see my hand? Four in front of people. You're shooting a plus slot. It's hard. That's the thing. When it comes to doing a doing an activity, doing a sport, okay. Go there's a lot of people that can play golf. There's a lot of people that still play hockey. There's a lot of people that still play football, soccer. Uh, recreationally, there's a lot of those adult league groups, and I think those are fantastic. I think those are great. It keeps us in shape. To play at a professional level is a completely different anomaly in all of the sports. Okay? You miss a shot. You ever been just booed? Nobody just booed you? Most people have never been booed. Just just like, hey, boo. No, most people have never had that experience unless they're, you know, wearing a opponent's jersey in the, in the, in the, you know, as a fan. They've never been on the court and somebody's like, you're trash, dog. They've never had that. And once they get that, they'll realize so hard. Plenty of friends that play PGA, yeah, they, they, they're, they're, you know, the pros at the country club for a yeah. reason. Yeah. It's and, unless you're on the live tour, then it's only three rounds. <laughs> Still live hard. Li- no, but see, what I love about live is, is that they, they, they play golf how 90%, I say 90% of Americans play music golf. in the background. Yeah. And I, 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 yeah. I got my speaker right here. It stays charged. Okay. <laughs> This thing stays charged. I, when I'm golfing with Chip, there's music going, man. I'm what? That's live. And that's how all those guys golf when they go on their, you know, family trips or they go to their, you know, the vacation homes during their they get like a six week, two months, six week break, something like that. And they playing golf, but they're having their, they're having fun. But live is like, look at y'all do this anyway. Now I get paid a boatload to do it. And I might get invited to a live event. Well, I'll just say, don't bring that to the tennis court. That speaker, that doesn't play well with me. Oh, uh, see, court. that's lame, man. If there ain't no music, I, I play paddle with a guy in uh, in Spain. 
Uh, and he always is playing some Springsteen. And like, man, get that music going. You I got ain't a no pro. damn pro. Got a pro. You ain't no damn pro. All man, right, I think the, the pros, the pros, confidence. Stick. You got, hey, hey, shut up. I get <laughs> shut up. All right, we are done here in Florida. We got some sunshine to catch. We want to thank our sponsors. It was great to see two of our own, Dennis Weinman and Rich Pototsky, the other night. Yes, uh, great. great guys. Support them and all our advertisers right here on the Adam Jones Podcast. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by our friends at the Weinman Company. Your fun awaits at Hollywood Casino Perryville. Feed the whole crew with something for everyone, from cheesesteaks to crab cake sandwiches. Plus, ask how you can get a $15 dining credit. Get in on the gaming action with the hottest slots and your favorite favorite table games like blackjack, roulette, and poker. Free live shows every Friday and Saturday. Come experience nonstop fun and excitement only at Hollywood Casino Perryville. The Adam Jones Podcast is brought to you by Jimmy's Famous Seafood, Charm City's favorite crab cake destination. Local sports fan? Experience the ultimate pregame party at the tailgate. Cheer on the Ravens with iconic live performances, an open bar, and mouth-watering eats. Can't make it? No worries. Bring the same food that caught the attention of the Food Network right to your doorstep. Shipping East Coast recipes nationwide. Jimmy's Famous Seafood is the official sponsor of the guests appearing on the Adam Jones Podcast. Maryland Lottery. Because fun looks good on you. Right now, play our exciting new multiplier scratch offs for a chance to win up to $2 million. If you received ERC funds, listen closely. The IRS has 10 years to audit your claim, but you only have until March 22nd to get taxpayer relief, and the clock is ticking. If you're losing sleep over a possible audit, we'll review your claim. If you made a filing error, we'll set things right. If you're being audited, we'll provide expert representation. The IRS Voluntary Disclosure Program ends March 22nd. You deserve peace of mind. Visit SaveMyERC.com to schedule a consultation today. That's SaveMyERC.com. By Effective Solutions, your one-stop shop for commercial contracting. Everything from excavation and site development to emergency remediation and restoration. Effective Solutions specializes in many forms of commercial and mixed-use construction, like leak investigation, framing, trim carpentry, insulation, drywall, painting, wallpaper, flooring, masonry, waterproofing, paving, tree removal, and much more. With a dedicated staff and a commitment to quality, Effective Solutions delivers every time. There are a lot of ways to make whiskey, but there's only one way to make Jack Daniels. At Jack Daniels, they charcoal mellow every drop, only using water from Cave Spring Hollow in Tennessee. When you make your own label, you make everything else yours too. But we don't need to tell you that, do we? Make it count. Jack Daniels. Please drink responsibly. Tennessee whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Jack Daniel Distillery, Lynchburg, Tennessee. Jack Daniels and Old Number 7 are registered trademarks 2022. Jack Daniels, all rights reserved. Everyone knows Green Mount Station in Hampstead, but did you know that at Green Mount Station, you can bet seven days a week just like you're at the track? With in-person teller windows and state-of-the-art touchscreen kiosks. And with Green Mount Station's brand new Bet Park Sports Book, you can bet on all other sports as well, wherever you are in Maryland. Spreads, money lines, live bets, props, parlays, and teasers. The Bet Park's Maryland mobile app is now live for Apple and Android devices, so you'll never miss your next big score. Just search for Bet Parks MD in the Apple App Store or on Google Play. And for a limited time, 21 and over Adam Jones podcast listeners can get a $75 gift card to Green Mount Station simply for opening a new account with promo code GMS and a minimum $50 initial deposit. $75 gift card for new users in Maryland only. 21 and over only. Please play responsibly. For help, call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey, you work hard, I work hard, and we all like to save money. That's why we need the Royal Farms Rofo Rewards app to get more value for our hard-earned money. With the app, you earn royalty points on every purchase, can place mobile orders for quick pickup, plus a discount at the gas pump with Rofo Pay. We all like to save money, and with the Rofo Rewards app, we do. Real fresh, real fast. Royal Farms. Also, thanks to senior executive producer Chip Franklin, who was not 100% this week. But even when he's not 100%, he gives us a solid 70% effort. Go out and subscribe to the Baltimore Banner. Until next week, be kind, be real, and be back for another edition of the Adam Jones Podcast. Oh, my Lord. <laughs>